Welcome to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody. My name is Ross, and today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Summoner. We just found Yagu, and he's sending us on a quest to Iona Monastery. But first, I never found the amulet. <laughs> Let's see if we can go and get that. Fleece is still in disguise. Joseph, stay here. You don't. You don't want to see the Joseph. I can't be solo. Okay. I couldn't open one of these doors. Aha! Uh -huh. It opens now, I guess. Oh, this camera angle. Who are you? No lock. Is that you? Yes. Lord Flicks. Until that kitchen wench, I'll be late for the council on her account. While the vassals go off to war, I'll be guarding the privy. No, forgive me then. My servant is a knave to abandon me. The stress is fundamental. Uh, I didn't mean to click on that. No, like, is that you? Yep. Guarding the privy. I would call myself the king of infinite space, but Belias will suffer no other posterior on the throne but his own. Yeah, I don't think I needed to know any of that. I wonder, have I messed this up? I'm just not going to get the amulet now? Hmm. Amethyst. This is where we just were, right? Oh yeah, okay. Here is... Please, how do we pick locks? You can't cast spells. What's this menu down here? Enter combat mode. Character status. Spells. I know you guys can't see behind me. It's quest journal. Inventory. Skills. Oh. Pick lock. Success. Ha <laughs> ha. That's how you do it. That's so annoying. Amulet. Got it. Jeez. All those times on stream I got caught trying to open that stupid door. I wish that was more of like a passive thing. Excuse me. Please, you're going the wrong way. So before we go to Iona Monastery, there are some things I want to do. Who are you? Sir Ionis, the wolf cub. Do not believe all that is whispered at court, for there are many who would profit from the fall of Sornahan. All that is whispered? If Sornahan truly desired the throne and has possessed the sinister powers of which he is accused, the prince still has done nothing to wrest power from his brother. His brother? The king is an impeccable judge of character, and the love and trust he has for Sornahan should not be dismissed so readily. Alright, sinister powers? His enemies say he is a disciple of the Nuvarism, Nuvasarim, Nuvasarim, the death magic that seduced the Emperor Murad of Arenia. Nuvasarim, last of the Nuvasarim, perished in the Inquisition of 104 Vorno Medeva, executed by the priests of Urath, but their infernal lore survives. Enemies. His greatest rival is the Queen's brother, the Duke of Taramun, who has risen in the King's esteem through their ancestors. Although their ancestors waged a bloody feud. Um, Beam by VP is asking me, what game have I rage quit? Magic the Gathering, mostly. <laughs> Here's my magic. Um, what game has like made me the angriest? Ah, there's definitely one. It'll come to mind. Uh, okay, who are you? Sir Hargor the Defiant. So your friend of Yago. His tale is most interesting. Interesting how? Prince Sornahan found the old man begging in the streets, a wretched creature, all bundled in rags. The vagrant had the gall to ask for a coin, so the prince raised his hand to strike him. Strike him? Yes, but when Sornahan realized he knew this beggar, Brother Yago, is that you, he asked? And all were amazed. 
Is this beggar troubling your highness? Asked the guard. This beggar, Sornahan replied, is a monk of the Order of Iona and my true friend and brother. Friend and brother? Indeed, the old man has lived in the palace ever since. Those close to the prince were none too pleased to have their position usurped by a vagrant. Usurped? How? Now they fear Yago, or Lord Yago, as they call him. A monk of the order is not to be trifled with, even an exile from the island. Their study of the language makes them daft, I've heard. Oh, and the Lord Yago bit? He's not a lord at all. Doesn't hold a scrap of land, not even a stone to beat a surf with. They made that up for fun to mock him, you see. And now they say Lord Yago out of respect. Even the king has him sit on the council now. Council? Indeed, Yago's detractors have become rather silent as of late. So stay on his good side, friend. Sometimes the one more powerful than the king is the voice whispering in his ear. Beat the serfs, yeah. Nobleman, I don't care what you have to say. Let's take a poop on the throne. There's some, still some things I want to take care of. Uh, mostly in the old city before we go to Iona Monastery. Where are you? Lady Kaladur of Ovato. Though Queen Galleon has endured much sorrow, she plays her role as well as any mummer. She has never forgotten her father was Duke of Taramun, heir to the Omari kings. Omori? Yomori settled the lands east of the Daru. Their name means Warriors of the Fist. Of all the feuds among the 13 clans of Medeva, none were so bloody as a war between the Runari and Omari. Omori. Plays a role. Galien wields much influence in her husband's court, and her subjects love her. But the queen is no fool, as the lords of Medeva have learned, Prince Sornahan in particular. Galien and Sornahan despise each other, and their hatred deepens with every passing day. She and Belias have no natural heir. She, feel, she fears if the king dies, the prince will claim the throne. Perhaps she will put her brother on the throne. And what a coup that would be. An Omori prince wearing the high crown of the Renari. Sornahan would be the only one to stand in her way, for his claim is the stronger. Claim? Aye. She has much support among the lords, priests, and commoners. The death of Belias will mean civil war for Medeva. Some say it is the queen who rules Medeva. Belias, the mighty warrior of yore, has no patience for financial and judicial administration, but he is a good king who knows when to let his wife rule. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's a mighty warrior, but he has no patience for financial or judicial administration, but so how can he be a good king? Don't you kind of need that? Who are you? Sir Remor the Bold. King Belias has ruled Medeva for 16 winters. Governing this kingdom has never been easy, and his disposition has declined over the years. Belias is no natural heir, and his time will soon be at an end. If he does not choose a successor, Medeva will once again fall into civil war and ruin. Belias and Galien had four children, though none survived to majority. The first was stillborn, and the second died of a fever. The boar killed the third, a bright young prince, during the hunt of Amandorn. The fourth, an agile climber and maker of mischief, fell from the tower of Verendal. None survived. The king and queen could bear no more grief, so the king will name his heir. Yet, the lords all fear no matter his choice, his death will mean a new civil war. Who will he choose? No one knows. Sornahan is a subtle wolf. His spies hide in every shadow of the realm. I've heard that Sornahan once tried to kill his brother when they were children, though both swore to keep the act a secret. This was before the prince left for Iona, where he failed his training. Wait, he failed his training? Training of the monks of Iona is rigorous, and only the strongest endure. His ambition drove him to failure, so he returned to Lanel. His brother Belias, now king, restored the titles and lands Sornahan had relinquished. Okay, he tried to kill his brother? I've heard whispers that Sornahan murdered his four nephews to keep the line of succession open to his claim. Yet what subterfuge or magic he used remains a mystery even to his enemies. Murdered? I believe the queen does blame him, though she cannot say how he committed the deeds. On Iona, Sornahan learned magic. Here he continues his studies. Dark and mysterious are the ways of the sorcerer. Thanks, bud. Anybody else of importance? Where are you? 
Armacelsus. Greetings, I am Armacelsus, chronicler of the reign of King Belias, the sixth sovereign of Medeva, prince of the Ruinari, protector of the realm. Chronicler. I am charged with recording the events of our monarch's reign and securing for all posterity his legacy in the annals of the kingdom. From the folds of his robes, Armacelsus extracts a sheet of vellum. The words on the parchment are written in a small, precise script. Let's see, what do you think of this? He begins to read. The young Belia, sixth of that name, ascended to the throne in 580 of uh, Vorho Medeva. VM stands for Vorno Medeva, the old man explains. For the reckoning of the Medevan kingdom, for in the year one of Vorno Medeva, King Perrin declared himself the rightful sovereign of all Medeva 596 years ago. As a young prince, Belias distinguished himself on the battlefield of the Civil War of 577, when the barons protested the taxation of their lands. A fierce warrior was Belias, though no beard yet darkened his chin. The historian frowns and stops reading. Mm, no, I don't care for how I worded that. No matter, there will be time to revise. Armacelsus resumes his lecture. An eighth lunar of 577, Belias won the Battle of Tormanen, the victory that rallied the armies of the crown. Following year, he married Gallienne, daughter of the Duke of Taruman, and so the war ended. Armacelsus glances up from the parchment and adds, I'm speaking here of the present Duke's father, of course. The old man passed on in 586, and the son inherited the title. Though Gallienne and Belias never met before the wedding day, theirs was an enduring love. Armacelsus leans forward and whispers in your ear, Well, everyone knows that's nonsense, but I have to put that in there. Never confuse history with the truth, my friend. Wedding? Wait, the king and queen are married? The marriage secured the power of the monarchy, granting Medeva 20 years of peace and prosperity. Prosperity. Well, never mind the plagues and famines. And lords never tire of butchery. Go on. Ah, uh, some other time. You must forgive me. The war council will convene soon. These are busy times for those who make history, and for those who write it. Farewell. Anyone else want to waste my time? <laughs> Um, nope, stairs going up. Wait, are you important? No. None of, you, none of you have the exclamation points over your head, so... Hi. Exit to the old palace plaza. Yep. Alright. Hey, Leo, it's your favorite soundtrack. Alright, we gotta find our way. I'm gonna go to the temple. There's some cool stuff, lore-wise, to be found there. I haven't been to this plaza yet, though. Suspense. <laughs> so that's back to the Crown District, I think? Oh no! This is all part of the... Wow. This map is huge. I want to make sure there's nobody hiding. Down here. Anybody doing anything illegal? How about you? Illegal? No. Now nah, you're fine. Let's check the other side. Keep up the good work, boys. Keep up the good work. So the designers who worked on Linnell really put a lot of effort into making this like grandiose and spectacular. Um I appreciate that. We're just, we're just appreciating the environment right now. Uh, that's the other side of the gate. I don't think there's anybody important here. The Nell Temple Plaza, yes. So now we want to check out the temple. Um, don't think we want to go that way. This way, yep. This is it. So the Crown District is on our right. Uh, our far right, I should say. We went up those other stairs across the way. And here's the temple. It's big and it's juicy. I don't know. I don't know how a temple can be juicy, but this one is juicy. Temple of Uroth. 
Oh, thank you for uh, opening that gate for us. Ah, uh, the Temple of Ura, the priest. Guvigov, I'm not going to read any of that. There are some important people here. And uh, we're going to get a history lesson. Not narr n narrated by me. Fortunately. Just praying priests. We'll actually get a narration this time, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, these doors, you can't open these doors. I stand corrected. Who are you? Oh god, I swear to god, if there's nothing up these stairs, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> Just another monk standing in our way. Oh, there is stuff up here. Hello, who are you? Prelate. I am Tyrion, the wise, prelate of the Order of the High Temple. Prelate? I am the temple's envoy to the court of King Belios. In the name of the Hierophant, I offer counsel to the king. The High Temple is more land than any lord, and 5,000 lances to defend it. Without the Urathi, the king would not be king. The Hierophant of the Order of Urath crowns the king of Medeva, and he rules by our mandate. Princes of the Runari are descendants and heirs of the god Uriath. Urath. This the Hierophant proclaimed six centuries ago, and so the Medivan conquest began. Conquest? A 300 year war among the 13 clans. Though the Runari won the crown long ago, the war continues in the hearts of Medeva's lords. Runari? The Runari are the people who settled on the banks of the Daru River, where Linnell stands today. King Belias is a descendant of their princes. Great. I'm just going to check out the other side, just to make sure there's nothing across the way, because I actually thought you couldn't open these doors. And then we're going to go up to the altar and talk to the Hierophant. And the Hierophant will um, give us a tour. Uh, okay, doesn't look like there's anyone out here. Who are you? I'm Sir Amun, Lord of Osan. I was holding of the High Temple, and I am a vassal of the Order. It's going to defend the Temple against its enemies. Alright. There's tons of, like, any NPC you can click on and interact with. If you wanted more flavor and depth and lore, this game's got tons of it. Speaking of lore, let's get a huge history lesson. This is actually very crucial to the plot of the game. Hierophant. I am Ferenc, Ferenc of Moano, Hierophant of the Urathi Priesthood. Hierophant. I am leader of the Order of Urath, sworn guardians of the eternal right. As long as one voice speaks the right, the world shall endure. This has been our mandate since the, the Arenageth. Arenageth. The mosaics of the temple will tell the story of uh, of the Arenageth, the War of the Gods. Do you wish to hear it? Yes. Do you wish to learn about the first, second, or third Arenageth? Would you rather learn about the death of Urath, god of the Sudani? Start at the beginning, as you wish. This is the tale of the Arenageth, the War of the Gods. The children of Guval usurped their father, the maker of all things, and Urath proclaimed himself lord of all creation. But Urath's sister, Lahara, envied her brother's power and sought the throne of heaven for herself. Lahara and her disciples rebelled, and the gods made war against each other. Thus we know this battle as the first Arenageth. Urath crushed Lahara's rebellion and banished his sister to Kosos, our world, where our ancestors lived and died. Awesome. Uh, tell me about the creation, actually. So, Guval made the world, or would you hear the tale of the City of Gods? 
Perhaps you're interested in the banishment of Guval, or would the story of doomed Iona suit you better? Are we going to get the same story if we say start at the beginning? The story of creation begins with Guval, the maker of all things. From the tree of seven branches, Guval carved the spheres of creation, Urgal and Kosas. Urgal is the city of light and joy that lies beyond the Vaheomo, the sea of stars where Anadi keeps watch. These are the white spires of heaven, beyond the fires that vanquish night and winter. Kosos is the world, and here we have lived since the firstborn. The sea and the mountains, the fish and the birds, and all people of all kingdoms belong to Kosos. In Kosos we live, and in Kosos we shall die. Guval, the maker of all things, created his children, Amesido, god of the sea, Lahara, goddess of the flame, Vadagar, god of the earth, and Urath, god of the sky. From the white stones of his city, Guval cast down his children. Never shall you cross the gates of heaven, said the maker of all things. Here I am lord, and I shall rule so all creation knows my tyranny. Kosos shall be your kingdom and your prison. Okay. Tell me about the, the Arenegath. You heard about the first one. Let's do the second Arenegath. So be it. Among the people of Kosos, Mahara brought chaos and discord. The skies, seas, and plains royal with war and bloodshed. By Mahara's hand, the children of creation turned against each other. Urath heard the lament from Kosos, and he came down from the heavens. For a hundred years, the second Arenegath raged, until Mahara surrendered. Urath exiled his sister to a prison deep below the earth, a world of fire we would come to know as the Kingdom of the Dead. Alright, let's learn about the third Arenegath. Arenegaths are just wars between Urath and Lahara. But Lahara would not concede defeat. She sent forth her minions to steal the souls of the dead and hoard them in the halls of her prison. Thus, deep below the world upon which we stand, our souls shall be doomed to endure all eternity. With a vengeful fury, Urath swooped down from his throne and struck the earth with his sword. The very stones that hold our world together split apart. This is how one kingdom became many. Medeva, Orenia, and the islands beyond the far horizon. And so began the third Orenegath, the final battle of the gods. Ah, so Medeva and Arenia were once one land. Hear about the death of Urath. Defeated once again, Nahara begged for mercy, and Urath relented. But then, as she embraced her brother, Nahara plunged a dagger in his back. Her minions fell upon him and tore the flesh from his bones. As Urath died, the winged Sudani fell from the sky, their god destroyed. The cities of glass shattered and became the Vahiomo, the sea of stars. This is how our people lost their wings at the dawning of the chaos of ten thousand. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I heard about the creation in the Renega. So, yeah, that's the lore. All right, that's important stuff to know. The plot of this game is 
it kind of has its foundation in the story between Urath and Lahara. Thank you for watching Kelvin's Coin TV. My name is Ross. This has been Summoner. We learned a lot about the lore of the game. Join us next episode as we go back to the old city and uh, do some shopping and some uh, some loose ends tie-offs. See you then.